Uh, Welcome to General Conference Conversations, the podcast where we have conversations about General Conference. I'm your host, Kaylin, and I'm super excited to be here with you studying the words of our living prophets, apostles, and chosen leaders. I've loved listening to podcasts about Come Follow Me, and I saw a need for a podcast centered around the General Conference talks. Um, I'm not a scholar, I'm not an expert, I'm a 20-something who just simply adores the gospel. The things I discuss are my opinions. Um, As one of my favorite podcasts, at last she said it, often says, your mileage may vary. In addition to my connections and thoughts, I will include a list of questions at the end of every episode as a place to start with your own deeper study of each talk. And I hope this podcast will be a jumping off point as you apply these principles to your life. In that spirit, I invite you to read and study today's talk before listening to this episode. Listen for what the Lord is saying to you personally. Then come join me for a beautiful discussion together. Hello, hello. We're back. I know it's a few days late. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't know if I need to explain every time I'm a couple of days later with an episode, but I feel like I do, so... We were camping this weekend, and so we got back on on Tuesday, like noon, and so it's been a crazy couple days getting unpacked and like laundry and all that jazz. So, but I'm here, and um, I'm excited about the talk today. Um, We're still in the women's session, and we're talking about Sister Craven's talk, "Do What Mattereth Most." So, of course, I always encourage you guys to listen to the talk or read the talk before you listen to the episode. Um, So I'm going to do that again. I invite you to do that. But I'm going to jump right in. Um, She starts with a really great story that kind of sets the tone for the rest of her talk. And I I actually quoted this story in a talk I gave in sacrament meeting a few weeks ago because I loved it so much. She says, Not long ago, a dear friend had an impression to visit a woman in her ward. She brushed off the prompting because she hardly knew her. It just didn't make sense. But since the thought kept coming to her, she decided to act on the prompting. Because she was already feeling uncomfortable about the impending visit, she determined that taking something to the sister would help ease her anxiety. Certainly, she couldn't go empty-handed. So she bought a container of ice cream, and off she went to begin what she worried might be an awkward visit. She knocked on the woman's door, and shortly the sister had answered. My friend handed her the ice cream in a brown paper bag, and the conversation began. It didn't take long for my friend to realize why the visit was needed. As they sat together on the front porch, the woman unveiled a host of challenges she was facing. After an hour of talking in the warm summer weather, my friend noticed the ice cream melting through the brown paper bag. She exclaimed, I'm so sorry that your ice cream melted. The woman sweetly responded, it's okay, I'm lactose intolerant. And she kind of goes, she uses this throughout the talk of like, you know, what was more important, the ice cream or the conversation, right? The ice cream or the fact that my friend actually went over and listened. Um, And I really love, I really enjoyed this story because, this is going to sound weird, it doesn't have like an overtly gospel overtone right? Obviously, like, she did get the prompting, but it wasn't like it was from ministering sister or, um, like, something like that, and in in the story, we don't know if it talked about the gospel. We don't know. I mean, very well could have, um, but she doesn't explicitly say that, and, you know, it was just a very lovely visit that this woman needed someone to listen and to be there, And it didn't matter that she was lactose intolerant and then she brought ice cream and then it melted because she got to talk to someone and she felt, like, loved and seen. And I love, right after this um, story, she says, Being a disciple of Jesus Christ involves more than just hoping or believing. It calls for effort, movement, and commitment. It requires that we do something, being doers of the word and not hearers only. In the case of the melted ice cream, what mattered most? The ice cream or that my friend friend simply did something? I know I've talked about this in past episodes of 
and we just talked about this with was it other cooks yes other cooks talk um that our good deeds and our like actions change because of our conversion to the lord they follow our faith that as we have faith in christ um we're led to do things because we want to be more like him or you know we see his love and his atonement in our lives and we want to share it with people whatever that may look like even if it is just going and sitting and listening to somebody right or smiling smiling at someone on the street or um anything right like and it could be I feel prompted to give you this book of Mormon (laughs) or I feel prompted to invite you to church but it could just be I'm can do you want to come over and have dinner with us and just be in our home and like spend time with us and um and I think it can go we take sometimes we take actions so literally that we it starts to become a pride thing it's kind of off topic but it came to my mind so i'm gonna say it that oh like we're doing more than this person so we must be more faithful or we're doing you know this and they're not so we must be listening to promptings and they're not and i don't think that's true (laughs) like Our actions don't make us better than other people, but they do show our personal commitment to Jesus. Jesus Christ commanded us to love. He loved. He set the perfect example of loving. And... I lost my train of thought. And so, like, that's the... it's, It's... sure we can set an example of like loving people but like we shouldn't judge others or no we shouldn't judge ourselves uh, because oh this person's doing all this stuff and I'm not doing anything that means, must mean I'm not being faithful enough and I also don't think that's true which I think brings me to my next quote um I believe It's a little bit later, but this does go off of this. So she talks about... Isn't that true with anything we want to learn or know? I invited my new friend to start doing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Praying, studying, serving others, and trusting the Lord. Conversion doesn't won't come while doing nothing. It comes to the power of the Holy Ghost as we intentionally make an effort to know by asking, seeking, and knocking. It comes by doing. And I like the things that she says, but like... And also, there are other things, right? Also, those three things or four things that she said will look different for everybody. Like, my praying will look different than even, like, my husband or my best friend or my bishop. Studying looks different. Like, the way I study and the way my husband studies, very different. Serving others looks very different because we all have our different... um, like uh, talents and abilities right like me serving in one place might make absolutely no sense because you know I'm not a carpenter or you know I'm not good at construction but I can serve by sewing a blanket or I can serve by you know going helping with yard work um or clearing you know I did that a lot on my mission we would go and like clear garbage and we'd throw it all in dumpster right like I can do that but if somebody has like a specific skill or like they're really good at electricity, like they're an electrician and they serve somebody in their ward or somebody like a neighbor who's having electrical issues and they're like, yeah, I can come look at it. Like that, I couldn't do that. <laughs> I'd electrocute myself and probably like burn their house down. Um, and trusting in the Lord is also going to look different for everybody. You know, some people trust, oh, I'm going to trust in the Lord and I'm going to move to this new state. And, you know, start over my life because that's what I feel prompted to do. That would stress me the heck out. And, like, obviously if I got a prompting to do that, maybe I'd probably fight a little bit. 
honestly and be like, mm, no. But <clears throat> I guess I've done that, so I can't really say that. <laughs> we recently did that. But for some people, trusting the Lord means like just waiting and waiting because they're not getting an answer yet and they're trusting that eventually they will get an answer. And so that's my kind of first question is what are other, what are some other ways to do the gospel? Like what does praying look like to you? What does studying look like to you? What does serving look like to you? What other ways do you do the gospel in your life? Because you might not realize that you are doing the gospel. Like I listen to uh, gospel like church podcasts um, and honestly sometimes that is my studying because I'm crazy busy and I I've, it like stresses me out to sit down and read the scriptures because I feel like I could be doing other things which I know is bonkers and I could definitely you know spare 15 minutes to read a couple of chapters but but I can put an earbud in and I can listen to church podcasts for hours and hours and hours while I'm cleaning or while I'm working or whatever and um that works for me and sometimes you know I do read my scriptures but sometimes I just listen to podcasts or like preparing for this podcast is my study for today I read two talks today because I'm recording both of my episodes for this week today and so um that's going to be my my study today is just reading two of these talks and recording these episodes and so i think there's a lot of ways that we can do the gospel of jesus christ right even just the story that she told at the beginning of taking ice cream to somebody and just talking to them right like really making time for the people in your life even it's just like my husband sitting down and just talking to him for like an hour instead of like being on my phone or whatever like actually spending quality time because what would Jesus do he would spend quality time so that's the question I want you to ask yourself what are some other ways to do the gospel what do you already do in your life to do the gospel um and what are some ways you know other ways that you could brainstorm that might like be like oh I, I never thought I could I, I never thought of that being the gospel or like doing the gospel you know I, I never thought of that as studying or I never thought of that as serving or whatever that maybe you could um, start implementing if you want to um, and then so that goes leads, leads to my next one it says quote she says, Satan would love nothing more than for us to misplace our eternal values, leading us to waste precious time, talents, or spiritual strength on things that matter not. I invite each of us to prayerfully consider those things that distract us from doing what mattereth most. I'm going to ask you, what mattereth most to you? And how do you seek revelation on what mattereth most? Kind of going off the last question, right? That it's going to look different for everyone like what mattereth most to obviously okay back up there are eternal things that mattereth most right <laughs> loving your neighbors loving god like our families and there are eternal principles that are always going to matter the most right but there are going to be some some things that I feel like I've done that people have been like, well, that's, that doesn't matter, or that doesn't matter as much, and I'm like, but it does to me, right, like, I, for example, I was prompted to start a calligraphy business, it was very random, but, um, I learned calligraphy on my mission, and I love it keeps me helps me calm down it's very like soothing and relaxing and I decided to make a business out of it and um like that matters a lot to me because obviously that's how I'm I'm not really making money off of it it's kind of for fun but like I can make money off of it it is a way for me to also like share my testimony. I made general conference stickers in April. And like there's just 
it matters to me. And that might not be like, oh, well, that, that doesn't matter at most. Like, but it, it does to me. Like, that is something that matters a lot to me. And some people might say, oh, that mattereth not. Right? Or whatever. But there might be something in your life that, that there, people are like, mm, that doesn't really matter. And you're like, but it does. Like, it matters for my mental health. Or it matters for my family that we get this done or that we do this, this specific thing. And so I want to ask what mattereth most to you. And because it is probably going to look different than other people. And I talked about this with like people in my life who have just very different life stories than I do and different um, things that they value um, that we've talked about that have like my life's going to look different than yours just because you know my husband and I have different goals we have different dreams um than you do and not that's not a bad thing like I'm grateful that you have the life that you love and the life that you worked for and like that's great and you know we want to have the life that we love and that we work for right and so it is going to look a little bit different but so this quote kind of bugged me, but I'll get to this. A high school student recently told me that it has become popular among some youth of the church to disregard the commandments with a calculated plan to repent later. It's sort of a badge of honor, I was told. Certainly the Lord will continue to forgive those who humbly repent with real intent, but the Savior's merciful atonement should never be used in such a mocking way. We know the parable of one lost sheep. Of course, the shepherd will leave the other 99 sheep to find the one who has strayed. But can you imagine the joy that those who chose to be the 99 bring to the good shepherd? The ones who stick together and help each other live their covenants. And while I agree that the Savior's atonement should not be used in a mocking way, um, the 99 thing kind of bugs me. Because that whole story is that if you stray, the Savior will come after you. And I'm sure that all of the 99 at some point had been the one. And the Savior had to go one by one for all of them and leaving the 99 to go find the one. And I'm sure it's different every time. And I just have this thing that, like, I feel like we're like, oh, we shouldn't be the one. We shouldn't be the one that strays. I'm like, we're all going to be the one that strays sometimes. And maybe these youth don't understand the atonement they don't maybe they do and maybe they do and they're mocking it but I feel like a more um more realistically they just don't understand the atonement um and so you know they're they're trying to find a way around the their youth right (laughs) like I don't say that to like be denigrating, but like they're still figuring out their lives. They're still, I mean, we're all figuring out our lives, right? But they're in that state of like, I remember what it was like to be a youth. It wasn't that long ago for me. It was like ten years ago, and you know the commandments and the standards of the church seem very, very um, tight and restricting when. You know, not even, like, I didn't have any inclination to drink because I just didn't want to, or smoke, or drugs, or anything like that. But even just, like, wearing a bikini. Or, you know, obviously, you're not going to go to hell. (laughs) If you wear a bikini, you're not going to get kicked out of the church, right? You're not going to get excommunicated. But sometimes that's how it's taught. Sometimes that's um, how it comes across, is that if you wear a bikini then that means you're obviously, like, inactive leaving the church. And I don't know if that's the standards, obviously, <laughs> like, the commandments that they're talking about. I mean, I'm sure that, that there's probably more that are, like, more serious. Um, I don't think the youth are going out and killing people. <laughs> Hopefully not. But, but, like, that it's okay. I don't know. I've I, like, got really off my topic right there. Oh, like, but as a youth, 
sometimes I felt those very were very constricting and so they're probably trying to find a way around them and be like oh well I'll just repent later for it and that shows to me at least that they don't really truly understand the atonement and they don't really truly understand why we have the commandments and why we have the standards in the first place and that you're not going to get excommunicated if you wear a bikini or if you you know stray and be the one that's straying like the, the that you're loved and that you're like no matter what you do you can always repent um but you shouldn't be trying to on purpose with the intent of like repenting later right like it just it, it feels like a disconnect to me not like a <clears throat> a purposeful mocking and it might be I don't know what's going on in these youth lives and in their heads but um but then that just the 99 is like it's okay I don't want to say it's okay to be the one that strays but it's okay to be the one that strays sometimes like we are going to stray and the Lord is coming to get you and of course the 99 bring the Lord joy all of his sheep bring him joy um but at some point, all of those 99 have probably been the one who has strayed. So, just wanted to point that out. Um, and then she talks about... She says, we, gather, we are gathering Israel as we participate in the work of salvation and exaltation, striving to live the gospel of Jesus Christ, Caring for others in need, inviting all to receive the gospel, and uniting families for eternity. And I thought those were really simple, like four simple ways that um, that you can help with the work of salvation and exaltation in your own life and the life of others is loving God and loving your neighbor and inviting them to, you know, when the time is right and when you feel prompted to do so, to invite them to church, to invite them to partake of the gospel. Um, and then she talks about the youth theme for this year is proper Proverbs three, five, and six, which is the trust trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto lean not unto thine own understanding. She says a key component of component of trusting in the Lord is moving forward, believing he will guide us even when we don't have all the answers. I really loved that. Like, it goes along with that kind of, like, continually doing things, right? Um, that it's, it's a cycle. That as we have faith in the Lord, our actions change. And as we do those actions, as we love people, as we trust in the Lord, our faith grows. And it goes on and on. It's a big, windy circle, right? Um... And so, yeah, a key component of trusting the Lord is moving forward, is is acting on the, the revelation that you receive, is, like, trusting that he is going to kind of move the mountains in your way, right, to, to get to where he's revealed, like, he's prompting you to go, even if it looks like there's mountains in my way. How is that supposed to happen, right? Um... <clears throat> And she says, sisters, it's not about the ice cream. And it's not about doing more. It's about doing what matters. It's applying the doctrine of Christ in our lives as we strive to become more like him. And as I was reading this, I realized that this does sit and may feel like it's, it sounds like you're supposed to be doing more, right? It sounds like this, like you're not doing enough. You're supposed to be doing, not just believing, not just hoping, but doing and, you know, in the back of your mind, you might be thinking, I'm already doing so much. I can't do anything more. And I totally, totally feel that. When I was a missionary, we had a zone conference, and our APs, which is the assistants to the president, um, gave a training, gave a, like, presentation or whatever. And basically, like, called the whole mission to repentance. of like, you need to be doing more. And... I know for some missionary, like, my companions loved that. She was like, yeah, I totally feel like I need to be called to repentance, and I totally need to be doing more, absolutely. And I felt like garbage. I was like, I hated that. I already feel like I'm doing so much. How do they expect me to do more? What are they expecting me to do? And... 
and um, well, I talked to my companion about it and it, it ended up working out and the APs did call us I think they called a lot of the companionships and was like we heard that like our training didn't go all, all that well and they kind of explained it to us and they're like we wanted you to know that we think you're doing great and you know it was just kind of supposed to be motivational and so I think that's kind of the same thing here like it's supposed to be motivational in that like you know, you ha- you will have all these promise blessings if you do what matters most. But I like what she says. She says, it's not about doing more. It's about doing what matters. And it's hard because the very next paragraph, she's like, the more we do to stay firmly on the current path, which is kind of, I don't think she realized that she was doing that. But like, in my mind, I was like, you did, you just said not that this isn't about doing more. <laughs> but then you said, the more we do but that it's about doing what matters it's about working smarter and not harder and that was something that i like tried to continually bring up on my mission for missionaries like my my fellow missionaries that i served with was <clears throat> working smarter and not harder because you know you can go out and knock a hundred doors in a day and maybe that's like that's what you're prompted to do during the day but you know maybe you need to go and sit with a member family for an hour or two and talk about the gospel because they need someone to listen to them and they need support, right? Like, it's not always about doing more, more, more. It's about doing, it's about prioritizing. Um, Like I was talking about with my studies and stuff, like this today is going to be my studies. I'm not going to try and cram in an hour or half an hour of scripture study because I know it will stress me out and trying to do that and I know that I'm going to feel guilty when I don't do that, right? Even though I have studied today, I have done the gospel today. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat is so croaky this morning. Um, but I promise you that you can work smarter and not harder. You can find ways that you know, already work with what you're doing, with what you're good at, with what you love. Maybe you really love listening to podcasts. You can just substitute in, like, one of your episodes for a a church podcast every week. Maybe you really, really love studying the scriptures. Like, fantastic. Do that. And, you know, maybe your service is making your family dinner every day. Like, that is service. You are serving. And <clears throat> and I think it's it's really just, like, noticing where you are doing the gospel and, and trying to figure out where, where else you could do the gospel if, you know, if you have that goal to do more or to do something different. Honestly, just doing something different. There is also something on my mission that I learned about goals and preach my gospel with goals it talks about if you don't meet your goal reassess and change change your goal not necessarily lower your goal change your goal or change the way you're going about your goal and I really love that because it wasn't just like oh well we didn't find 15 people this week so we gotta keep our 15 goal for next week but that just, like, it just wore on you, right? Because you didn't hit the goal and you didn't hit the goal. You kept doing the same thing over and over. Oh, what do they say? Um, oh, what's the quote of, like... Oh, I can't remember what it is. It's something like, sadness comes from doing the same thing over and over and expecting the same result, or expecting a different result. Right? And sometimes doing it over and over is gonna, right? You're gonna have to like do it a couple times to be like, oh, that doesn't work. It's stressing me out. But that doesn't mean you have to lower your standards. That doesn't mean you have to give up on the goal completely. Maybe you change the goal. Maybe you're like, oh, finding people is not really, it doesn't really make sense in our area. So we're gonna like make a goal to meet with five families every week, five member families every week. We can do that. 
and maybe through our member families we'll find people like maybe they'll be like oh yeah we have a friend who would like really like to know that's going to meet with you next week as well and bring them along and so sometimes you know the lord works in mysterious ways right sometimes it's very roundabout and sometimes um my my best friend and i talk about this all the time that like will make a goal of the way that the lord prompts us to like um to get to that goal makes absolutely no sense so it'll be like oh yeah um i'm saving up for this thing or i need help like financially and like the lord's like read your scriptures more and you're like but that's not gonna help but it is like right like it does the lord is promising that so um anyway so she promised the last kind of paragraph in her talk is really good and she says as we center our lives on jesus christ we'll be guided to do what mattereth most and we will be blessed with spiritual strength contentment and joy and i actually love that little promise at the end that like we will be guided to do what mattereth most in our lives and we'll be blessed with spiritual strength and contentment and joy so so a recap of questions really quick um, the first one, oh, I lost it. There it is. So what are some other ways to do the gospel? And then what mattereth most to you? And how are you seeking revelation on what mattereth most, on what to prioritize in your life? Um, I think those are my only two questions, right? Yes. So, I invite you to do that. I invite you to figure out what matters most in your life. And it's always going to change, right? It might be different today than it was yesterday, and it might be different a year from now than it is today. It probably will be, because life's crazy, and life changes minute to minute. But, like, as you prioritize what matters most in your life, that, um... And even even if it looks different than somebody else's, because it will look different than somebody else's, that you will be content. You will have that contentment. You will have that joy. You will have the satisfaction that you're like, okay, I did what I needed to do today, right? And maybe you get to the end of the day and you're like, I have an hour. Maybe I can do something for myself or I can do more service or I can study my scriptures more or whatever it may be. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Talk to you next time. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of General Conference Conversations. Be sure to follow and share us on um, any social media. And if you like the show, feel free to leave us a review or tell your friends. Until next time.